Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and today I want to show you a tutorial for how you do a chapel like this. This is my uh, Warhammer 40,000 themed chapel. So it's uh, built mostly like a sort of vaguely medieval chapel um, with the stones and the roof and stuff, but then with 40k symbols in the stained glass windows. So I think it, uh, I, I tried to make it a sort of multi-purpose uh, terrain piece, so I don't think it would look odd on an uh, on a fantasy themed board, but also not out of place on a 40k board. So that was the the plan anyway. This was supposed to be a an, you know a really quick project, something I could just do uh, in the space of an evening or two, and then it just completely went overboard, and I've spent I don't know how much time on it. Uh, that seems to be a recurring theme on this channel. I think I can do something really quickly, and then it turns out to take much, much longer than I originally thought. So uh, that's probably why I'm late all the time. I don't really have a great uh, concept of time, I think. So uh, I'm going to show you how I built it. For, it's, uh, it's all scratch built, except for the uh, except for the, for the clock here. Otherwise, it's all scratch built. And I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. So I started out by trying to decide how I wanted it to look. I just tried drawing a sort of basic chapel-like shape and then I drew a clock tower. This was later discarded because I realized that I had uh, taken on a much bigger project than I originally thought. And I decided I wanted it to be relatively slender and then have a big window in the middle. And that was basically just my decision process and I started drawing it out on foam board. I really like using foam board for uh, these sort of projects. It's really easy to draw on and to cut into and it's relatively sturdy as well. If you don't have access to foam board, you can definitely use other things like cardboard for instance. Um, but if you have access to foam board, it's just easy and often relatively uh, cheap as well. So I tried measuring it out to make sure that I had the exact shape I wanted to, uh, to work with. I decided that I didn't want it to just be straight up and down. I wanted it to have some angles so that it would be a little bit more visually interesting. I didn't quite know how I wanted it to uh, <laughs> actually look when it was done. I just knew that I didn't want it just to be completely uh, straight. So you can also see I have a bit of an angle to the roof. It's uh, uh, it's not just a, a complete straight line. I wanted it to look like it had a bit of a slope to it. I think that always makes for a more visually interesting rooftop. And then I just used the base of a paint to do a round shape for one of the rounded windows on the other uh, end of the building. I always use a very, very sharp knife when cutting in foam board and foam uh, in general because otherwise it'll give some sort of like rugged edges and it just doesn't look really, really nice. Uh, and foam just has a really nice tendency to make your blade on your knife dull. So you have to get have a lot of spare blades when you're doing projects like this. So here I'm showing some silicone molds of a door and a window. And these I've made myself just because I really hate doing these by hand every single time I do um, a terrain project. And you can see the original uh, shape was made out of uh, Fimo and Milliput. And I just made them so that they could uh, split apart if I just wanted to have a mold of the door frame as well. The window has also been sculpted using Milliput and then I just have some plastic rods for the grid between the window frames. It is relatively easy to do, I think, and if you are interested in how I did it and how to make these silicone molds, you are more than welcome to leave a comment and I will do a dedicated video to that. I'm no professional, but I think it works out pretty well. I cast them using dental plaster, which is uh, relatively sturdy, and I just glue them onto the foam board using regular white glue. Um, I have never had any troubles with it falling off or anything, and it's really cheap and easy to work with. Once all the windows and the door is in place, I start putting the building uh, itself together. I use again white glue and then I use some pins to make sure that it will stay together. I use a ton of pins and um, I think it is a really helpful tool because of course glue doesn't uh, dry all at once. So this way I make sure that it stays together both while it's drying and of course afterwards it helps just give them a little bit more of a little bit more stability which I always think is nice because after all a terrain piece is intended for being used uh, often and being moved around and stuff. 
I use I often prick myself in the fingers, but that's just uh, you know the price you have to pay pay for being a little bit clumsy. I use relatively thick cardboard here for the uh, for the roof, and I also put that in place using pins and some white glue again. I'll be adding some texture to the roof later on, so this is just the basic structure that I'm trying to put in place here. Now it's time to start adding the stonework to the structure itself. And for the corners I used thin pieces of XPS foam that I've cut into shape using my hot wire foam cutter. They're all roughly the same length, but I tried to make sure that they don't match up perfectly on top of each other, just to give it a bit of added visual interest. I always like to think of how I can make something be a little bit more interesting to look at. I use also the small XPS uh, foam blocks for framing the bigger windows on the second floor. I don't have any large windows uh, in my arsenal of uh, silicone molds, so I have to do it a, a little bit more tricky, but I think it will work just fine here as well. I, uh, I should perhaps make some bigger windows, I don't know, perhaps I will someday. And then for the stonework, for the rounded stones, I have some stones that are also uh, made out of a dental plaster in a, another silicone mold I made myself. And I just put on some white glue again and then glue the white stones here in place. And they're in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and I try to make them look like they are just placed randomly but in a way so it still looks, you know, aesthetically pleasing, I think. I, I kind of like this part. It's like doing a uh, a small mosaic or something. It's it's quite relaxing and quite satisfying to see it all take place. When all that's done and the whole building is covered in stonework, I mix up a bunch of uh, black paint, some border and some white glue, and I'm going to be covering the entire structure with this. I got the idea from the uh, channel Black Magic Craft, and if you don't follow him here on YouTube and you're interested in any sort of terrain building, you should definitely go check him out. It's an awesome, awesome, very inspirational channel. So I just covered the entire structure in this. It helps give it all a black base coat, and the glue helps uh, to make sure that all the plaster parts are stuck very, very firmly to the foam board so that it won't fall off no matter how roughly you treat it. Once that is dry, I start painting the stonework, again using a technique inspired by Black Magic Craft. So first off, I paint some of the stones using Slanish Grey from Citadel. And don't worry, it's going to look like I have infected it with the uh, uh, chicken pox or something, but it'll end up looking pretty cool, I promise. And then I use uh, some Barbarian Flesh from the Army Painter, and it doesn't really matter what kind, exact colors I'm using. Uh, you can use any sort of colors, as long as they're roughly naturalistic and, and not too similar. Another one I'm using here is, um, is Deepkin Flesh, and I also use Screaming Skull, again, from Citadel. And uh, I don't know, I mean, it looks a little bit weird at this stage, but I also kind of like it because, of course, I do like bright colors and sharp contrasts. Then I've mixed up a batch of gray just with some white and some black, and then I use a, a blue color called Light Sea Blue from Vallejo. I don't want the colors and the window frames to be exactly similar, so that's why I'm using different colors here. Then I use some uh, black and some brown paint mixed with a whole lot of water, and I just mix it up really thoroughly and apply it as a wash to the rounded stones. You can see I try to leave out the window frames and the corners because I want them to be shaded a little bit differently. I do the same with them, but only using a black wash instead. Then I do a quick dry brush using, um, using Deepkin Flesh, and it's all looking pretty light and a little bit too jarring, so I give it another wash, this time using Agrax Earthshade on the uh, rounded stones and using Nolan Oil on the corners and the window frames. Uh, I just use these washes to tie it all a bit more together. And once that is dry, I give it a final dry brush using a Screaming Skull. And I try to be careful, I don't want to go overboard, I just wanted to just highlight the edges of the stones. Then I start working on the stained glass windows. I use a piece of clear plastic, as you can see here, and then I just draw the design by hand using Sharpies. 
And I just use different uh, types of colored Sharpies. This is a brand called Posca. I don't know if uh, it exists all over the world. And once I have painted it, uh, you have to paint it on both sides, I think, otherwise it doesn't have a, a really good coverage. I will then uh, go outside and spray it with a clear varnish. I actually did this and I accidentally sprayed it with a black spray. I don't know if any of you have ever just grabbed a black spray when you thought you had the varnish. That was stupid, so I had to draw the whole thing all over. But it ended up fine, so there you go. Wasn't too big of a deal, though I was a bit annoyed with myself. Next up, I, once it's uh, all dry, I have glued the window in place and then I give it a just a clear coating of Mod Podge. This is not actually Mod Podge, but it does the same thing. It, when it dries, it'll leave just a nice, clear, shining surface. And you can see a bit of air bubbles, so if they bother you, you can just take a pin and just prick them and make them go away. I then dry brush the door with the Screaming Skull. Just uh, It has been painted black and now just give it a quick dry brush. And then I use some uh, chestnut ink to give it a sort of wood-like texture. I know that it's supposed to be an old door and some sort of grayish brown would probably be more realistic. But I don't really like the look of that, so I just give it this nice clear coating of uh, ink. Then I start adding texture to the roof. I want it to look like they are some sort of uh, uh, copper plates or something nailed to the roof. So I also use some uh, pins here to give added texture like some sort of rivets. And I do the same for the uh, tiles on top of the roof just to make sure that it all stays together. And again, more pins. It takes forever with these pins, but I really like the end result. And then paint the roof just with an ordinary black craft paint, just to give it an undercoating. Next up, I want to add a little bit of foliage to the to the building. So I put on some, uh, again, some of the white glue. And then I have some seed pots from birch trees uh, that I just picked outside my garden. And I use these for leaves. And I think it uh, it looks pretty believable. Then paint the roof with the Citadel Paint Fulgurite Copper. I uh, I wanted it, I wanted the end result to look like sort of an aged bronzed uh, oxidated uh, roof. Uh, so this is just my first layer of painting. I'm not quite convinced with this color actually. I think it looks too much like gold. So next up, I grabbed my new Army Painter Weapon Bronze that I just got in the big set I won. Uh, if you saw that video. And uh, this is a bit more reddish uh, copper, so uh, I like this uh, this quite a lot, actually. Uh, I know you should probably use craft paints on a project like this, but there you go. Then I take my contrast paint, uh, Warp Lightning, and start painting the leaves on the side of the building. They're now dry. You have to be very careful. They have to be very dry before you start uh, applying paint to them. Once that is done, I take some of my uh, Cryptic Armor Shade Gloss and just give the whole uh, roof and coating of that. It looks a little bit uneven here, but I'll just take a bigger brush and then sort of smooth it out just a little bit to make sure that it doesn't uh, look too much like a whole big mess. Then I leave that to, uh, to dry and once that's done, I apply my Nylac Oxide from Citadel to give it that nice oxidized look. Again, it looks a little bit uneven, but uh, this is not the last step, so it doesn't worry me too much. And while that's drying, I put the finishing touches on the, on the side of the building here with just a touch of mood green from uh, Citadel, just to make it look like there is a bit of light going on. Then I take a big makeup brush and do a dry brushing with the weapon bronze on top of the Nylac, Nylac Oxide. Uh, I know that that's not the way oxidized roofs look. I mean, it's if it was real, real, it was probably just all coated completely in in green. But I mean, this is you know for fantasy and sci-fi, so I don't really mind. And then a last coating with the cryptic armor shade, much more carefully here, and just basically highlighting the uh, the texture on the roof. And here you can see the finished results. I'm. Uh, I'm fairly happy with the way this turned out, even though it took much longer than anticipated. It's a relatively big structure, so I think it can work well as a centerpiece on both a 40k and a fantasy a tabletop, which is uh, what I intended. And it was a fun project to work on. I have done bigger projects, but sometimes, I mean, if you're in the middle of a project that takes 100 hours or more, it can feel sort of demotivating at a point. 
So, uh, so I think a project like this is uh, is probably a more reasonable size. So, um, there you go. If you have any questions or comments or anything, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will do my very best to answer them for you. So um, if you have something you want to show off, a terrain project or a model you've painted or anything, you are more than welcome to join us on the Dyson Demon showroom on Facebook. I will leave a link to that in the show notes. Also, don't forget to check out Black Magic Craft. I am heavily inspired by his works in my terrain building. So uh, go check him out as well. He does awesome, awesome work. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you will consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell if you want to know when I next post a video. I try to post at least two or three videos every week. So stay tuned if that's something you're interested in. Thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye.